Okay, guys. Um, so just about what we're doing here today. Um, this is going to be a, an interactive demo, and we hope to sort of take you through logging in to create your namespace, adding an application, deploying it. Um, here, our cloud um, is something that we've been working on for a little while now that we're quite proud of. Um, and the idea is that we're going to hope to show you how you can save some time and effort um, and money on prov handling, provisioning, Shikati runtime, TLS, SSL certificates, setting up the pod, containers, and Kubernetes. Um, so we hope it's going to be something quite exciting and something quite useful for you guys. I'm going to talk a bit about um, the, the closed beta test that we're going to be um, running as well. Um, we have uh, Steve Millich, uh, PR CEO and founder, who's going to be speaking, and Rudy Debusha, who is PR engineer, developer relations advocate uh, as well. Um, with questions, uh, feel free to throw them in the chat or in the QA section. Um, I will interject if I can, otherwise I'll save them to the end. Uh, for the guys that already gave questions on registration, um, I will save those to the end as well. So we will have time uh, to go through some of your, your questions um, and we can discuss a, a few points. So fantastic, over to you guys. Okay, th thanks Jaden. Uh, so I'm Steve Millage, I'm the founder of Pyara. I'm basically gonna talk you through uh, what we've been building really for the last year, year and a half, uh, and give you and Rudy's going to give you a demo of of what cloud native should be when it comes to Jakarta e applications. So as as Jaden said, uh, we've got an agenda here. We're basically first going to look at cloud native challenges when it comes to deploying uh, Jakarta e applications onto typical Kubernetes infrastructure. Then uh, we'll have a sort of conversation about, you know, the uh, philosophy behind Payara Cloud, where it came from, uh, what we're trying to achieve. Then we'll have a demo and we'll talk a little bit about beta testers and, and we've got some time for Q&A at the end. So cloud native is difficult. You know, we've been working with Pyara Platform, uh, Pyara Server, Pyara Micro to make our technology work well on typical containerized and Kubernetes type deployments. And while we've done a lot of work in that area and our platforms work well, there's still a lot of work you need to do as a developer to get this whole stack to work. So, you know, for example, you know, you've, you've spend your time building your uh, Jakarta e application. You, you, know, you want to spend time building the business logic, building value for your customers, value for your users. And what you produce out of that is a WAR file or you know, an EAR file if you have a, a, an EAR packaging. But in general, nowadays you're packaging in a WAR file. But to get that WAR file running on a public cloud, there's a whole load of stuff that you probably need to do or you will need to do, especially in Kubernetes. First, you're obviously going to need to pick a platform like Jakarta e, like a Jakarta e server, like Pyara server, if you're in a domain mode or Pyara micro, which is really designed for working in container environments. So you need to pick that runtime, you need to take a WAR file and you need to deploy it onto that runtime. You need to then also package that all up in a container image. This obviously requires you to write a Docker file uh, but, you know, building a Docker file from scratch can be non-trivial and can be error prone, but you need to build that container image. And then if you want to get this working on Kubernetes, you know, you need to take that container image and wrap it up in a whole load of YAML files to define what is your, you know, what is your pod or your service within Kubernetes. And then that requires, as I said, a lot of textual you know, editing of text files, which are quite esoteric and a lot of boilerplate text. And once you've got that defined, you then have to work out how you're gonna expose things that change for each deployment. For example, secrets, so database passwords, uh, URLs, so different components or, or things like that. Lots of, lots of configuration then needs to be externalized and injected into your pod. Uh, to get that to work within as you move it from different container environments. And then, of course, on the right hand side here, you have a whole load of infrastructure that you've got to stand up. Uh, if you're on public cloud, there is some assistance on standing up this infrastructure. But in general, you need to worry about creating VMs, 
uh, those VMs will act as the hosts or nodes for a Kubernetes cluster. You need to get a Kubernetes cluster running. Uh, as I say, some of the cloud providers make this a little easier than it would be if you were going bare metal. And then you need to worry about ingress. I mean, how do you configure the uh, endpoints? How do you conf configure an API gateway? How do you make sure that API gateway is, is pointing to your deployed applications? And uh, this is like a whole load of really boring, complicated infrastructure work that uh, as a developer, you really don't want to spend your time doing. The documentation can be pretty difficult, pretty poor. And, when, and what we've done in the Pyara, in Pyara is we've, like I said, we've been working with this sort of infrastructure to make Pyara Server and Pyara Micro work well within it. But while we were doing that, we realized, you know, that essentially that there must be a better way. So there must be an easier way to do this. And this is where the idea of Pyora Cloud came from. So when we're talking about Pyora Cloud and what we're going to show you today, we're not just talking about essentially running micro or running server on a cloud platform. What we're doing is totally rethinking about how we should approach this for, for Java e, Jakarta e developers. So when we was, I'd say, building all the capabilities into the server and micro, we really started thinking of a different philosophy. What we needed really is a next generation of a cloud native application server. And what I mean by that is uh, application servers are there to take infrastructure responsibilities away from you as a developer. You know, traditionally, they take responsibility for database connectivity, thread pool, work management, you know, networking, and lots of other infrastructure things that when you build your app to Kartary Java re application, you don't need to worry about. You'll spend your time uh, building your business logic. And Jakarta e and Java e were founded on that sort of principle. So Java e and Jakarta e has a packaging model. It has a deliberate step, which is where you take your application, which is packaged into a WAR file, and then you deploy it into a runtime. That's different to many of the uh, cloud native, in quotes, frameworks that you see at the minute, which are all about you know, packaging up a fat jar and building your runtime with your application and then worrying about getting that into a container. So Java e, Jakarta e actually, from the early days, has always split deployment from runtime. So, so what we've done is we've taken that concept and we've sort of doubled down on it, really. What we want developers to do is to take uh, your WAR file and then deploy it to the cloud. And within Pyora Cloud, what we believe we've done is we've built this capability. We've built something that is a cloud native application server. So what we do in cloud is that we manage the ingress, we manage provisioning, we manage scaling, we manage lifecycle management, and the whole other thing, and we manage all the things that application servers are there to manage. So the philosophy we we had really is that basically what we want to do is we want you to basically take your application in the same way as you would to say a Pyora server, application server, upload it, deploy it, and then it's running. And we, and, you know, that has been the whole philosophy behind Pyora Cloud. So, so what we, what is it? And you'll see in a minute, you know, what we built. The whole concept really is that you take your WAR file. You spend your time building your application and then you deploy it to Pyora Cloud. And what Pyora Cloud is going to do is to take that application, uh, inspect the application, and then provision a whole pile of uh, infrastructure behind it so that it runs natively on a cloud platform. And within the demo, what we're running on is Azure. So what we do is we take your WAR file, we inspect it, we, uh, we basically create and, and combine it with container image to create pods. And then we deploy those onto Kubernetes. Uh, we configure it through uh, the secrets all through the Pyora Cloud interface. And then your application is just running on a Kubernetes infrastructure within uh, a public cloud. So you as a developer can essentially go back to building business logic, which is, you know, 
what your bosses will say you're getting paid to do. And the application server, in this case, Pyora Cloud, is basically doing what application servers do, which is manage a whole load of infrastructure and runtime issues for you uh, and allow you to concentrate on building your deployment. So that's the whole concept that, we, that we've done. What I'm gonna do is hand over to Rudy and he's gonna basically show what this looks like in real life. Uh, and if, like I say, if you put, want questions while you're doing that, and uh, put them into the chat. Shall I stop sharing, Rudy? Yeah, okay, I'll take over then. So, yeah, it all starts uh, with um, the interface uh, that we have built to uh, the entire system. And when you get signed up for the, um, the beta phase, then you will receive an invitation link. And with that invitation link, you can get um, access to the system and you can identify yourself. So I've done that before. So he knows me already, but again, I need to log in um, to know who is on the other side and he can link me to the correct uh, subscription. Uh, the subscription is um, a grouping of your environments and it will also be used for um, the billing um, on the platform. The next step uh, be below the subscriptions are the namespaces. I'll have to move here a few windows because it is blocking. Um, I'll go over uh, the, new, uh, the new space uh, in a minute, um, what they are, uh, but you can see them as a grouping of your um, project, a uh, grouping of several uh, microservices or your application, uh, and you can assign it a stage like uh, testing, production, or uh, any kind of name that you like to give to that um, environment that you're running. Within that namespace, um, you can then start deploying your application. So um, let's do that first, and then I'll talk uh, a bit more about what you can do with all uh, the information which is on the screen. So I can select my WAR file, as mentioned, and by default, uh, we support now the um, Java EE and Jakarta EE web profile applications. And we can instruct the system to deploy it immediately. So now uh, all the machinery is set in action and um, at the, the first step is that it, the, the WAR file is uh, stored to a persistence. Storage within Azure, there is a verification uh, on, on that uh, file, on that artifact, what is there? Does any kind of configuration needs to be done uh, like a database connection or um, any kind of uh, configuration uh, parameter with uh, micro profile config specs, which is then all managed through those secrets, which uh, you saw on the previous uh, uh, on the slides. But again, also uh, all, the, all those um, Kubernetes resources uh, from a deployment a service, uh, make, making sure that the the linking uh, to the, um, the URL, um, the certificates, all those things are managed for you. Um, so as uh, Steve said, you don't need to worry about all those things. Just select your application and deploy it um, to the cloud uh, through this uh, Payara Cloud uh, environment. Hi, Rudy. We just had a question from Boris. He asks if you'd be able to deploy an EAR file, E-A-R. Um, not for the moment. Um, that will be probably in a, in a future version. Um, it is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, on the list of things that we need to invest, but um, the entire system is, um, is, is not using ear files, uh, capable of is using ear files for the moment. Thank you. You can al already see for the log file uh, to see if there is anything um, going horribly wrong, um, but it is not for the moment. Um, but again, log files, you can inspect it uh, much more in detail 
as you will see further down the demo. Going back to that um, res resource, uh, to that application uh, page. Um, you see there uh, three graphs and um, those graphs are integrated with the Azure monitoring platform. Eh? So um, it is uh, what cloud native should be. Eh? So we integrate it uh, with, uh, with the provider, with systems like the monitoring. Uh, which means that um, you can have an idea here of, um, of the errors, uh, the, which might happen in the log. Um, if I click here on the see error count is, is zero. The latest is not, not updated yet, but you see there are, yeah, now it is. You see there are a few entries in the log, but zero errors, so everything is fine. As I said, detail log file can you inspect with the, um, with the search log uh, functionality. You also have an idea of the number of um, HTTP requests which are handled by your application. And if there are errors, again, errors on HTTP requests can indicate either an error on the application or uh, maybe that someone uh, is uh, sending you uh, malicious information. And then on the right, you have that uh, indication of the memory and CPU. Uh, this graph tells you the percentage of the resources um, taken by your application. Um, so it's now almost zero because I did not um, activate my application yet. So um, maybe that's a good time to do it now. And it was a bit too early. As I said, a lot of machinery is, uh, is going on in the background and uh, I receive a bad gateway. So the the routing is not yet available. So let's then first uh, go over the, config, the configuration. In this case, as this was a uh, quite simple application, uh, it is a, I hope that I can show you in a moment. It was just uh, the um, showcase of the admin faces. So it is a GSF application with no connection to anything. So the only thing that I needed to config configure, which is um, proposed automatically, are things about the context routes and the URLs which are exposed. Uh, by default, he uh, has taken the name uh, defined of the word file and um, you might uh, indicate that not every part within your application needs to be exposed to the um, public IP address uh, so that you can specify parts which are only accessible from inside uh, from other microservices, for instance, which are deployed in that same uh, namespace. You can change that. Um, this is the information. So by changing it, you can click here, then the change configuration. You can adapt those things and um, save it. And then um, the machinery again is uh, put to action and um, those changes are propagated to the system and uh, will take effect. Let's try it again. Now, now it is available. Um, you see a standard app, app application. Um, it's not the idea that uh, I'll go over a lot of these um, um, app applications because any Jakarta web profile application is supported and will work as expected on um, the Payara cloud environment. So let's go to into detail a few other things I have about the search of the logs, for instance. Um, it shows um, if you go to that, <clears throat> sorry, if you go to that page, you see um, all the log entries uh, which are there. Um, you can filter by date. Uh, the, the log is kept for uh, several days, so it is um, automatically cleaned up with the, the old log files. Um, and even uh, in the case that your um, application would be undeployed, you still can access that log file uh, just because uh, it's no longer within uh, the application itself, but it is in that Azure um, logging system. So it is outside as it should be um, of your pod. You can filter. Um, we, um, in a, for a future version, we intend here also to put here some uh, more um, search cap capabilities so that you can uh, do a full text search or uh, uh, select on the severity, etc. 
going back to that namespace, for instance, uh, you see here another application, um, um, which is a, a Vadin application. Um, I can show you that also just to, 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 uh, to, to let you see that everything works. But here you see on the namespace level, you see here the combined uh, information. Eh? So there is already uh, an aggregation of all those metrics uh, which are performed at uh, an aggregation over those two applications now, um, which are, are shown here. So on each level, you see the correct um, type of information, the correct data. Here on this, um, Application, I want to show you the possibility uh, of what we call revisions. Eh? So at uh, the first time, like I did there before with that, um, that, uh, that showcase, that ESF showcase, you uh, deploy the first version and that is then the revision zero. Afterwards, you can make changes uh, that can be those uh, changes about context. It can all kinds of other changes, like if you define micro profile, config parameters, if you change them, and then a second um, revision is created. If you upload a new version and a new version of your work file, um, then again, it's creating a new um, revision. If you say there is something wrong, or if you see, okay, I need to go back, you can just say revert here. And then um, in this case, it will make the revision zero active again, and your um, entire system is rolled back to a previous working version um, if there is an issue with your newly um, deployed application, your newly uh, version of your application. So here, just to let you see that there um, any kind of application is working. So that this is um, not another one again uh, with some graphs, with some input fields, but um, um, it is working as it would work on any other platform on premise or in the cloud or whatever system. Of course, standard things, uh, like we said, we manage the life cycle. You can stop the application uh, here and then it is no longer ac accessible or you can um, delete the application entirely uh, if you say that you no longer need it uh, in any case. And as uh, um, a safety measurement, uh, you need to type um, the exact name um, of the application uh, so that you do not accidentally um, delete an application. So that's the short, quick, fast demo. Um, there are a few things more possible, uh, but of course, um, that's um, up to you if you are a beta tester to find out all those things. Back to you, Steve. Okay, thanks for that. So uh, as Rudy said, you know what, where we are at the moment is uh, we're looking to move this into a closed beta. So our process really is to go for a closed beta and then move to open beta and then launch uh, sometime uh, next year, around summertime. We're starting a closed beta in February and we're looking for people who are interested in essentially joining that, that beta. So, oops, wrong one. So basically what are we looking for? So we're, we're looking for someone, people who are, want quite a close engagement. You know, they, we realize this is, you know, reimagining re of what an application server is. And therefore we want people who are really looking to try this out and influence product development. So we're, we're looking for people who have a web profile app that would, they're happy to uh, test and we're trying to run on Pyora Cloud. Obviously, uh, at this stage, we'll, we'll be looking also to to get you to sign an NDA as we as we go into that, and then what will happen is we'll we'll basically be doing two-hour screen sessions with the Pyora team, getting you to try and get your application working without us leading, so that we can do user testing, and then give access to the to the product for a few days just to get to get feedback, and really we're looking for feedback that drives the uh, e evolution. I mean, at the moment. 
as I said, what we have is, is uh, a, a beta and we're trying to build that out for the, all the enterprise use cases that you'd have. We obviously know many of them ourselves through our customers, but we're really looking for real user influence and real user feedback. So if you'd like to, to sign up for the beta, then basically if we go to oh no, prior.cloud, then you can, there's a form on there and you can sign on that and essentially we'll be in touch. The longer term goal really is to get this out as a hosted service in the summer. It's currently running on Azure, but it essentially runs on Kubernetes. Longer term goals will this will influence on the product mo roadmap of server, Pyro server and Pyro micro and longer term, you know, if there's enterprise use cases that people have, then we'll be looking to, to, to build solutions that can be, you know, potentially deployed onto your own Kubernetes clusters. So with that, I'll just move on to questions. Have you got questions, Jaden, for the, for us? Um, yes. Oh, um, someone's just put in the chat. Ismail's just, I would like to test my struts, spring and ear projects. So that might be something for the future though, I think. Yeah, we can't do, uh, well, it's not that we can't do ears. The solution doesn't do ear files at the moment because that's obviously more complicated because that would involve uh, remote EGBs potentially and things like that. But if you've got a straight web profile application with database connectivity, uh, which we didn't show today, then that's the sort of thing we're looking for at this point. Real. Um, and Marcel asks, uh, what database services are supported? You know that you want to pick that Rudy or line? Yeah, I can pick that. So um, yeah, basically just as is any application, um, if you have a JDBC uh, co connection possible to the data source, then um, it can be um, used with Payara Cloud. Um, the only requirement for the moment is that you um, bundle your JDBC jar file within your ap application so that everything is self-contained. Um, but other than that, there is no restriction um, on the database. Uh, it can be located anywhere as long as it is, ex as it is accessible um, by uh, any kind of G JDBC connection. Yeah, and we'll, longer term, we'll be looking to, we obviously support databases hosted on Azure, uh, and we'll be looking to provide provisioning for those if needed, but you should be able to talk to any database that you have uh, Obviously, from a performance perspective, ideally on Azure for testing purposes. Brilliant. Um, Polo asks, uh, will Pair or Cloud support Java EE9 during beta? Not during beta, uh, but obviously we will become Jakarta uh, EE9 compatible when the core platform becomes compatible, essentially. So we build obviously on, on Pyora Micro. Uh, so when that becomes Jakarta 9 compatible, we'll be able to roll out a compatible uh, product. Okay, brilliant. Um, Ivan uh, asks, um, and can this be deployed on AWS? Um, and are there any integrations with different AWS services and zones? Currently the beta is deployed on Azure. Uh, there's nothing technically preventing it uh, being deployed on AWS because it's basically built on top of Kubernetes. I mean, there may be some services at the moment that are Azure specific, but you know, fundamentally, architecturally, it's not an Azure solution. It's a Kubernetes solution. Uh, so the goal, the goal will be to roll it onto a, uh, AWS as well as Azure and we, you know, go to a, a live service. Um, Rogerio, uh, uh, he just asks um, about any idea for, for prices for these services. I know that's a bit of a way off uh, yet. Um, yeah, I mean, all I can say is the philosophy will be sort of, it will be a metered type solution when we, you know, do a Pyora hosted version. Uh, other than that, we, we haven't got the pricing yet, but it will be, you know, following standard sort of cloud pricing. Okay, brilliant. Um, Apollo, he just says he, he'd, he likes to, he would like to join the, the beta test. Um, and if anyone else is interested in also joining the beta test, um, Steve uh, put up a slide earlier, but I've also put up in the chat, um, I've put a link 
uh, to the Paracloud page. Uh, so if you head there, there's uh, more information um, and there's a form there where you can uh, submit um, and see if you can uh, get involved. Um, any more questions uh, from the attendees? Okay. We're very keen about getting feedback on any, you know, even the, just the philosophy of building a solution that is sort of Kubernetes cloud native. So if anyone has anything that comes up afterwards, please just get in contact with us. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, and with that as well, um, we are doing more and more events uh, through our, our meetup. Uh, so if people are interested um, in coming to more of our meetups, then please uh, check it out and join and you'll uh, get a bit of um, awareness of some of the events that we're going for the future. I'll, I'll put that link in the chat as, as well, um, as well as with uh, Reef, um, which is basically just our our openness to being involved with events. So if you are um, interested in uh, doing projects or campaigns with Payara, then we're certainly open to that. And certainly if you're interested in being a, uh, a beta tester, then we'd be uh, happy to uh, work with you in a sort of marketing capacity to uh, talk about what you're doing. And um, we'd be wanting to talk with you closely with your feedback as well anyway. Um, but we can publicize that um, and help you with promotion. If that's something that you're interested in. So I think that is everything. Oh, um, Rogero asks, is there a way to scale the app after deploying it? Yeah, I mean, that will be part of the solution because basically the app is packaged into a Kubernetes pod. So there should be no problem scaling it out uh, basically in, in response to traffic or from a user you know, deciding to scale out. So that is all built in to the solution. Fantastic. Okay, guys, um, then I think if there's no more, then we'll uh, finish up there. Um, as Steve said, uh, you can always get in touch with us uh, through details on the site and um, we will answer your questions. Uh, social media as well, we're really active uh, on Twitter and, uh, and Facebook. Um, so yeah, you can always get in touch and follow us there too. Brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. All right. Thanks. I'll see you later. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.